Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm back with a review of the brand new USB microphone from Rode. The microphone we're looking at is the Rode NT USB Mini, and if you are interested in this mic, it will set you back around $100. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And in the sake of full disclosure, I do need to let you know that Rode sent me this microphone for the sake of doing this review. But for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to my Mac. My gain is set at around 25%. I am recording at 24-bit 48 kilohertz, and I will not do any kind of post-processing to the audio, but I may have to boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. Of course, you are going to get the microphone. It comes with a previously installed mount, the desktop stand, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a USB-C to USB-A cable, and a quick start guide. Next up, as far as the build quality, it feels pretty good. I think it has a metal and nylon body, and the grill has quite a bit of give to it, but it bounces right back without denting, and the mount that is attached to the microphone is made out of metal, and it allows for 360 degree rotation. Then on the front of the microphone, first thing you'll find is two lights, first one being a zero latency monitoring indicator light to let you know if that is on or off, and then you'll find a USB connection light to let you know if it's receiving power and is successfully connected to your computer. Then beneath that, you'll find a volume dial which only controls the 3.5 millimeter output on the rear of the microphone, but it also doubles as a button to turn on or off the zero latency monitoring. Then on the back of the mic, you'll find a 3.5 millimeter headphone output, which does allow for zero latency monitoring, as well as computer playback, and you can have both of these playing at the same time. And then you'll find a USB-C port to connect this to your device. Then when we look at the mounting system, you are able to magnetically connect this to the desktop stand, but if you want to mount this to a boom arm, you'll need to pop out this little rubber bit, and then you'll find 5 8 inch threading, or you can throw in the 5 8 to 3 8 inch adapter to put this on a boom arm. Next up, as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 Hz to 20 kHz, a max SPL of 121 dBA, a bit depth of 24 bit, sample rate of 48 kHz, and as far as the headphone amp goes, I was able to drive the HD650s, although the volume was near 100%. Now I am spinning around the Rode NT USB Mini to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around the microphone to 180 degrees, show you what it sounds like from the rear. Continue around the microphone to the second 90 degree angle or 270 degrees. Here's how it sounds. And then we will rotate and end at the front of the microphone. Now I am right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing. Now I'm about three inches off of the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how it sounds. One foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the Rode NT USB Mini. Now let's go ahead and test the plosive rejection of this thing. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you elite gamers, now I am typing on the sad W keys. This is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And here's how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. Now I have the Rode NT USB on a boom arm and I am tapping on the desk so you can hear how much of that it picks up when you have it attached to a boom arm. And then I will tap on the boom arm itself so you can hear how it rejects that kind of noise. Now I have the NT USB mini on the provided desktop stand. It is set directly in front of me, maybe a foot, foot and a half away from my mouth. And here is how it sounds. I did have to increase my gain to about 50%. Now I will go ahead and bump the desk to show you how it does at rejecting that kind of noise with the provided desktop stand. 
And now to demonstrate why you probably should use a boom arm with this mic if you plan on gaming, I am typing on a keyboard with the microphone on the provided desktop stand, and here is how much of the keyboard it picks up versus my voice. Next up, I want to do a very quick comparison between the NT-USB Mini and a bunch of other microphones around the same price point to see how the audio of this microphone compares to all of its competitors. We'll start with me speaking three inches off of the Rode NT-USB Mini with my gain set at 25% to show you how this sounds before we jump to the first microphone. Now I'm about three inches off of the Samson Q2U, which is typically a $40 to $60 USB and XLR dynamic microphone. It's connected directly to my Mac and my gain is set at around 50%. And here is how the audio compares to the NT USB Mini. Now I am back on the road NT USB Mini so you can hear how this microphone sounds before we jump to this next mic that we're comparing it to. Next up, I'm three inches off of the Blue Yeti Nano on the cardioid polar pattern with my gain set at around 75%, and here is how the audio compares. Back on the road, NT USB Mini, three inches off of my mouth, gain at 25%, and here is how it sounds before we jump to the next microphone we're comparing it to. Now I am about three inches off of the Audio-Technica AT2020, which is a $100 XLR condenser microphone. I have this connected directly to the 18i20 second gen, 48 volts phantom power on, and my gain is set just at around one o'clock. And here is how the audio compares to a $100 USB condenser, the NT-USB Mini. Good, we're back on the road NT-USB Mini. Here is how it sounds before we jump to this next microphone, which we will start the sample of right now. I don't know why I said we, it's only me here, but here's that next microphone. Now I am speaking into the $100 Rode Pod Mic, which is a dynamic XLR microphone. I am three inches off of this thing. It's connected directly to the Focusrite 18i20 second gen. My input gain is set just shy of 100%, and here is how the audio compares. Hey, I'm back on the road NT-USB Mini, so you can hear how this sounds when I'm three inches off of the microphone with my gain set at around 25%. Let's jump to the next mic. Now I am three inches off of the Blue Yeti in the cardioid mode. The gain on the microphone is set at 25%, and the gain on the computer is set at around 75%. And here is how the audio compares to the Rode NT-USB Mini. To make the comparisons a little bit easier, I am back on the Rode NT-USB Mini so you can hear how this sounds before we jump to the next microphone to compare it to that. To that. Next up, I am speaking into the Samson G-Track Pro, which is another multi-pattern USB condenser microphone. I am set on the cardioid mode in the mono mode, and my gain is set at around 11 o'clock, and this is connected directly to my Mac, and here is how the audio sounds when I'm three inches off of the mic. Okay, back on the NT-USB Mini again, so you can hear how this microphone sounds. Three inches off of my mouth, gain at 25% before we jump to this next microphone. Next up, I am speaking into the big brother of the NT-USB Mini, the standard Rode NT-USB. I am three inches off of the microphone with my input gain on my Mac set at around 40%, and here is how the audio compares. And in case you're wondering, I am not speaking into the rear of it. I have just rotated the pop filter around to the back. What an absolute shocker. We are back on the Rode NT-USB Mini, so you can hear how this microphone sounds before we jump to the next microphone. How many of these are we going to do? Now I am speaking into the Rode VideoMic NTG, running it over USB directly to my Mac. I do have the 20 decibel pad engaged, and my gain is set at around 50%. And this is how it sounds when I'm three inches off of this microphone. I think we're finally near the end of the comparison section, but I am back on the NT-USB Mini again, so you can hear how this microphone sounds before this comparison that's coming right now. And lastly, I'm speaking into the Rode NT-1, three inches off of the microphone. This is a $260 XLR condenser microphone. It's connected directly to the 18i20 
Second gen, 48 volts turned on, and my gain set at around 11 o'clock, and here is how it sounds. And I didn't realize until now that I compared the USB mini to, <laughs> to mainly other Rode microphones. That was unintentional. These are the mics that people requested I compare it to on Twitter. Now I am going to throw the NT-USB Mini in the Box of Doom, and then we will measure the noise floor to see how noisy this microphone's preamp really is. Now the NT-USB only has a single sample rate of 48 kilohertz, and with an I.O. buffer size of 64 samples, we have a round trip latency of 9 milliseconds or 4.5 milliseconds output. When we jump up to 128 samples, we have 11.5 milliseconds round trip or 5.7 milliseconds output. And when we jump up to 256 samples, we have 17 milliseconds round trip or 8.5 milliseconds output. It's all about that reptile life Basking in the sun, shape-shifting for fun Mind control the general population From the dark side of the moon Humans are my food, I will rule the world Um, probably shouldn't have said any of that, should I have? I feel like this is gonna be awkward. This is gonna be a problem. Sorry? Okay, so at $100, I think this is a very interesting competitor in the USB condenser microphone market. And first up, in terms of pros, this microphone is USB class compliant, so you will be able to use it with Windows or Mac or even a tablet as long as you can plug it into that device. I'm also happy to see that they included zero latency monitoring in this microphone. The headphone amp was also capable of driving even the HD 650s, which are very difficult to drive. And I am so happy that they did not cram a bunch of different capsules and polar patterns in this thing, and they really focused on a single capsule and a single polar pattern and focused on making that sound as good as they could. But then in terms of cons, I do find the noise floor of this microphone to be a little bit higher than I would typically want. I also would have liked to have seen a mix dial to mix between zero latency monitoring and computer playback. And lastly, I would like to have seen a longer USB cable to make it easier to mic up instruments and stuff that isn't directly at your desk. And now, what are my overall thoughts of this microphone? On the electric guitar, I really wasn't that impressed because in the higher frequencies, it started to get a little bit shrill and grating and just unpleasant to listen to. So for electric guitar, it would not be my first choice and it's not something I would reach for very often. Then on the acoustic guitar, it offers a very mid-forward sound with a good amount of articulation without sounding brittle or harsh and I would be perfectly happy using this microphone to record some acoustic guitar for a YouTube video or for some music demos. Next up for singing, I think that's my favorite application for this microphone. It just offers an incredibly smooth midsection, and then in the treble and air frequencies, there's this really nice sheen to it without sounding brittle, 
and in the lower frequencies, it is still there, but it's not overpowering, and it doesn't sound too thin. And lastly, for spoken word, the main thing about this microphone is that it is very mid-forward, and it does tend to accentuate some of those nasally frequencies, so if you have a nasally voice, this may not be your best bet, and also if you are just looking for that modern V-shaped sound with a lot of bass and a lot of treble and somewhat of a recessed midsection, this microphone is not going to offer it for you. And to wrap up, would I recommend this microphone? Both yes and no. The first thing I need to point out is that I think you need to buy a boom arm with this microphone because the provided desktop stand simply puts the microphone too far away from your mouth and it picks up far too much room tone. And if you're typing or gaming or if you're somebody who bumps the desk a lot, the microphone will pick up all of that if you're using the provided desktop stand and throwing it on a boom arm will get you much better sound. With that being said, if your max budget is $100 and you are set on a USB condenser microphone, phone, I think this sounds really good, and I like the fact that it offers a different tonality compared to its competition, like the Blue Yeti and Blue Yeti Nano and Samson G-Track Pro. This offers a very different, much more mid-forward sound. So if that is your budget and that's the type of microphone you're looking for, and you like the mid-forward sound, then 100% I would recommend this mic. But on the other hand, if you are willing to spend between $100 to $200 and go the extra XLR route, I think that would ultimately be better for you because in that price range, there are some amazing sounding XLR microphones and with a USB audio interface, you have a lot more control over the sound and you would get better noise performance. And that is going to wrap up this video, but I want to hear from you. I did so many comparisons between different mics in this video. Let me know in the comments down below which microphone was your favorite. But other than that, if you found this video fun, interesting or helpful go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you hated it big old thumbs down if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the five dollar tier it helps me continue to bring you these videos i love them so much and until next time thank you so much for watching thank you so much for listening okay bye